Hello everyone, welcome to another video lesson on poetry. Today, we shall have a look at an inspiring poem. Mm, I don't know if I can call it a poem, it is in fact a song. A song that calls for change. A song that addresses the power politics of the past in that way pertinent to the contemporary times too. The Times, They Are A-Changing by Bob Dylan. The Times They Are A-Changing is a song written by Bob Dylan, the renowned American singer, songwriter, author and visual artist and released as the title track of his 1964 album of the same name. Dylan wrote the song as a deliberate attempt to create an anthem of change for the time. And you can see it is influenced by the Irish and Scottish ballads. Ever since its release, the song has been influential to people's views on society, with critics noting the general yet universal lyrics as contributing to the song's last message of change. Dylan has occasionally performed it in a concert. The song has covered, has been covered by many different artists in different times. Now let me tell you something about the civil rights movement which is important as far as the background of this song is concerned. Civil rights movement. In the history of the United States, there have been many social changes that have occurred, such as black Americans gaining their rights and freedom, the new generation of civil rights movement called the Black Lives Matter movement, civil disobedience, and many more. The civil rights movement of the 1960s was one of the most significant and important movement that caused a great change to America. They fought for the equality of black, black Americans and also against segregation and discrimination. Since the abolition of slavery in 1863, there had been a conflict between races of people who live in the United States. People's rights they were being violated on a consistent basis just because of a person's race. Everyone's class, religion, and even their level of knowledge, they were judged by the color of each person's skin color. Many of the changes that the movement fought for brought on a violent opposition from many white people, especially the Southerners. This led to the violent deaths of some of the famous leaders. Of course, you might be knowing the civil rights movement leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm Tin. Not only that, but it also led to two pretty distinct groups of black activists, two groups. On one hand, they were a group of black activists who were rather violent, and on the other, the group that believed in peaceful, non-violent resistance. But this did not cause any big conflict since both groups had the same goals. Dylan recalled writing the song as a deliberate attempt to create an anthem of change for the moment. This was definitely a song with a purpose. Yes, it's a song with a purpose, an objective, an aim. And it was influenced, of course, by the Irish and Scottish ballads like Come ye all ye bold highwaymen, come all ye tender-hearted maidens, etc. Now, Dylan wanted to write a big song with short, concise verses that piled up on each other in a hypnotic way that will touch your heart, that will touch and impact and affect your consciousness. The civil rights movement and the folk music movement were pretty close for a while and they allied together at that time which culminated into what has been celebrated as what you have in your text, the times they are changing. You can see the A, uh, the A in the song title is an archaic intensifying prefix as in the British songs, a hunting we will go and here we come of a sailing from the 18th and 19th century. Yes guys, let's go through the song first. I'll read the f song completely first and then we'll look at its critical analysis and background. Come gather round people wherever you roam and admit that the waters around you have grown 
and accepted that soon you will be drenched to the bone. If your time to you is worth saving, then you better start swimming or you'll sink like a stone. For the times, they are a changing. Come writers and critics who prophesize with your pen and keep your eyes wide, the chance won't come again. And don't speak too soon for the wheels still in spin. And there's no telling who that it's naming for the loser now will be later to win. For the loser now will be later to win for the times they are a changing. Come senators, congressmen, please heed the call. Don't stand in the doorway, don't block up the hall. For he that gets hurt will be he who has stalled. There's a battle outside and it is a raging. It'll soon shake your windows and rattle your walls for the times they are a changing. Come, mothers and fathers throughout the land, and don't criticize what you can't understand. Your sons and your daughters are beyond your command. Your old road is rapidly aging. Please get out of the new one if you can't lend your hand, for the times they are a changing. The line, it is drawn. The curse, it is cast. The slow one now will later be fast. As a present now will later be past. As a present now will later be past. The order is rapidly fading. And the first one now will later be last. For the times they are a changing. And the first one now will later be last. For the times they are a changing. All right, guys, so there goes a popular song by Bob Dylan, one of the greatest songwriters of all time. Dylan has been a major figure in popular culture for more than 50 years. And you can see here, he addresses all the people around him in the first stanza. And then he addresses the writers and critics in his second stanza. Now, in the third stanza of the song, Dylan acknowledges the congressmen and senators, the ruling men, people in power, people who has power. While in the following stanza, he calls upon all parents, fathers and mothers and tells them the times are changing. The poem is in fact an archetypal protest song according to critics, where Dylan's aim was to write upon the unvoiced sentiment of a mass public and to give that basic sentiment an anthem, a song, a melody, and give its clamor an outlet. He succeeded, but the language of the song is nevertheless imprecisely and very generally directed. The song has been made obsolete by the very changes that it predicted. You can see the social changes, political changes, the economic changes, everything. As, uh, the song is replete in all these changes. And because of this, it was politically out of date almost as soon as it was written. The song transcends the political preoccupations of the time in which it was written. Bob Dylan belong to the free spirits that would never be tethered, controlled by something like the evils of Nazism, communism or socialism. In the 60s, Dylan could see that the times were changing. Change, the whole society, the conditions, the circumstances, everything is in a state of flux. People had change and he favored change. We have to accept change. Remember, this was written not long after Second World War and was a time of the youth in this country being adamantly against war, divisiveness, hate and injustices like racial discrimination. Young people in the 60s were a rebellious and outspoken bunch and they were inspired by, uh, they were in inspired and they were influenced to take the world by storm. If something was horribly wrong, they were out there in a protest. They were there to react. They responded. These are the sons and daughters that were beyond parental command. That's a point. They were beyond their parental command. Parents, they didn't have much hold over their children, as Dylan wrote in the song.
and they were the children of the war generation and they set out to fix what the people of the world in their parents' age group screwed up. If they can't change, we are there to change. They became proactive in their own right to try to change the times for a better for a better world, for a better future, a better world for themselves and a future for their own children. They knew collectively, unanimously, togetherness, most of them wearing peace symbols around their necks. There is a change for unity, prosperity and peace was the new order. Peace was the new cult. When Darlin says, come gather round people, he's really speaking to the whole world, but more specifically to us in America as world leaders to deluge, to fill, to flood the world with love, equality, our music singing praises to a free society and transforming this post-war world into a planet of peace. He is making a call for change that all better join the movement of the peacemaker. The whole action of the 60s was about movements and protests to right the wrongs, to rectify the errors, to bring change, better change. This of course meant civil rights, which they knew would bring them head to head with the government. So Darlin is making a plea, he's requesting in the song. Next he calls the senators, senators, congressmen, please heed, please pay attention to the call. Don't stand in the doorway, don't block up the hall. In other words, what is he saying? These politicians, they needed to get off their, uh, they have to change. They have to get off and they have to make the country a good place for everyone to be. Uh, people in power, they have to change first. They should not block the way, they should not block up the hall, and they should not obstruct progression. They should not obstruct prosperity and peace. Don't block up the hall could be interpreted as you better stay out of your way. We are going to flood over you and we are going to fix our America. We are going to fix the wrongs. We are going to fix our land and country. So better you move away, stay out of our ways. The confidence and enthusiasm was at last, uh, was at a fever pitch in the 60s. So there's a battle outside. He is giving you a warning. Bob Dylan is giving them a warning. Uh, there is a battle and it's going on there. It's raging there. The message to our Congress was, if you, the government, stand in our way, you will be the ones who drown. If not keeping with the changes that must come, sinking like a stone when the waters, the waters means the masses of the people, the populace, the population have risen all around to them. Those of the parents' generation, they are admonished. He is reprimanding. He is trying to blame or he's accusing or rebuking the older generation, the parents' generation in much the same way. Please get out of the new one. If you can't lend your change, if you can't accept change, if you can't bring in new ways, if you can't accept new ways, new revolution, new thoughts, better you stay out of the way. A kind of mantra in those days was don't trust anyone over 30. This made the older generation sort of a quasi enemy to the youth. And they looked on the youth of the 60s as a bunch of uh, pot smoking, rock and roll or folk music, free love hippies. That's how the older generation, they had an impression on uh, the youth, about the youth. The people over 30 criticized this peace love generation and even did so in the press, calling the baby boomers degenerates and losers. They call the youth losers. They don't know things. They are a bunch of spoiled ones. But Dylan knew that the loser now would be later to win. So there lies the point. Today will be tomorrow. What is seen today will not be what one is going to see tomorrow. The phrase is supported in effect when he says in the last verse that the first one now will later be the last. The younger generation, they were they was taking the bull by the horns and they were in it to win it and the status quo or the current situation, the current circumstances is the present and it will be soon the past. Today will be changed and after a few days it will be 
yesterday which means that uh, the civil rights will come into fruition and always will always as Stalin says be rapidly fading everything will fade everything will move out everything will pass the civil rights movement was the main influence of the song but it can also be applied to the frustration and anger the American people they felt as a whole towards the Vietnam War so the whole song is a symbol it's an embodiment of their anger their frustration and their aversion to the whole thing called war Bob Dylan reinforces this in each stanza of the song and he is repeating the same words at the end of every verse in terms of a promise not a threat that the times they are changing so this incremental repetition it's a promise it's not a threat it's a promise it's a hope that the times they are changing what it truly makes the song unique is the way the song was written the language the hypnotic element embedded in it and its hypnotic verses that can be used to describe several different time periods where the people needed a rallying call for change see guys what is bob dylan tries to bring here the old generation they was they were able they were unable to accept that indeed the times were changing and they were dragging their heels down a road that was vastly different from what they had traveled so today the roads the routes the thought process the mental structure everything is different that was completely different from what they had been or what they had been experiencing and when they were younger they soon found that there was nothing that they could do to stop the change. Mm, change has become inevitable. It has been many long years after Darlin wrote it, yet this song, the times they are a changing, vibrates with new meaning. Uh, do you wonder, it's pertinent, it's relevant even now. Look around you and then we understand that every time you read the poem, every time you read this or listen to this song, sing this song, even though it has been many long years, it vibrates, new meanings come out of it. It vibrates with new meanings, new interpretations and perhaps new implications. Perhaps it's because uh, the song itself doesn't look to the past, rather it's an anthem of hope for a future where change is always possible. Thank you guys. That's all for today. I will see you in the next video lesson. Till then, enjoy your learning.